Hello seekers, welcome to Panit's Astrology, your one-stop astro channel. Do you know that Rahu has entered into the first pada of Ashwini Nakshatra? Rahu which is uh, a retrograde planet, in fact always retrograde. Uh, it's a shadow planet so it will be bound to move in the opposite direction of the luminaries which are sun and moon. So Rahu was in Ashwini Nakshatra and it is now, in fact from 28th of August, Rahu is in the first pada of Ashwini Nakshatra. So it is in the Gandanta pada. And because Rahu is moving backward, it entered Ashwini Nakshatra from the fourth pada. And now, after covering the three quarters of Ashwini, it is now in the final three degrees. And on 30th of October, Rahu will cross the Gandanta of Ashwini and Revati Nakshatra. It is a big event. Once in an 18-year cycle this will happen that Rahu will restart its journey for every planet when they come to Aries it is their beginning it's their 12 zodiac journey because Aries becomes the starting point but for Rahu Aries is you can say the completion because Rahu when it moves to Pisces will again start a reverse journey a retrograde journey in the 12 zodiac sign so you're watching this episode on Puneet's astrology channel please subscribe Share the video among family and friends because sharing is what will make the reach of this video wider and will make the make this lot of people get connected to the message of Jyotish. Please do not forget to hit the bell icon so that you don't miss another update. You get notifications of my videos. If you want to take consultations, you can drop me an email. The email ID and other links, all social media links are in the description box below. Let's understand what really this Rahu in Gandanta will mean for all of us. Rahu is a planet of deception. It's a planet that represents the wave patterns. It's electromagnetic impulse. And it is also the, the, the way the, the radiation moves through the space. We can't see, we can't feel, but we can do uh, calibrate this through instruments. We, if we have right set of instruments we will be able to judge the electromagnetic wave pattern similarly if we have right calibration of planet we can actually judge the true intentions and the motive of rahu so when rahu is in ashwini nakshatra ashwini the nakshatra of ashwini kumas the divine healer becomes metaphysical i have already made a video of rahu transit in ashwini nakshatra long back you can refer to that video but Rahu in Ashwini is more like uh, the divine doctor who is using a high technology, advanced technology, who is using divine powers, healings, something that you have never seen before. But Rahu by default is also a rebel planet. It's a planet that has, in fact, Rahu himself as a semi-demigod or you can say uh, a half-demon, half-god has actually rebelled against the gods, the deities, because he wanted to attain the status of pure uh, godhood or he wanted to become a deva and because of that he deceived uh, and, and entered the road to drink the nectar, the amrit and at the moment the Swarbhanu which is actually the name of Rahu, Rahu is only the name of the head of the demon Swarbhanu the demon was cut into two parts, one was called Rahu, the body was called, head is Rahu, body is Ketu and, and we all know this story, right? But you have to understand that this means that the natural trait or tendency of the planet is to fulfill his desire by hook or crook, even through deception. Seems like Kalyug, right? So Rahu uh, can also be, you can also say that Rahu is the thought process which can easily corrupt the mind of the people in this world. And you can say Rahu is the king of Kalyug on the planetary level. So such kind of planet where it enters into the asterism of Ashwini and when, when it enters the first pada, it some, Rahu some, sometimes will feel that it is his dharma to create chaos. First pada of Ashwini Nakshatra also connects itself to Aries Navamsha. Because if you see the Navamsha association of Ashwini's first pada, it's Aries. 
एंटायर अश्विनी नक्षत्र एक्चुअली फॉल्स इन दी एरीज जोडियक साइन द फर्स्ट थर्टीन डिग्री ट्वेंटी मिनट्स ऑफ एरीज सो यू कैन सी दिस डबल एरीज डबल मार्शन कनेक्शन नाउ ब्रिंग राहु अश्विनी नक्षत्र लॉर्ड केतु एंड टू मार्स एनर्जी सो इमेजिन राहु केतु एंड मार्स मीन्स ट्रेमेंडस अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी समटाइम्स इट कैन बी वायलेंस समटाइम इट कैन बी रिवोल्ट समटाइम इट कैन बी टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट समटाइम्स इट कैन बी यू कैन से डिसेंट शोइंग डिससेटिस्फैक्शन एंड दिस कैन बी एट वेरियस लेवल्स इट कैन बी एट अ वेरी नॉर्मल डे टू डे लाइफ मे बी यू आर नॉट हैप्पी विथ द प्रजेंट सिनारी एंड नाउ यू आर बींग वोकल अबाउट इट और इट कैन बी एट एट जियो पोलिटिकल लेवल इट कैन बी एट द ग्लोबल लेवल ग्लोबल स्केल एंड वी वी आर सींग दैट हैपनिंग वॉट यू आर सींग दैट इज हैपनिंग इन द जियो पॉलिटिक्स इज एक्चुअली द आउटकम ऑफ दिस राहु यू नो लॉट ऑफ पीपल ट्राइंग टू गो अगेंस्ट द ओल्ड ऑर्डर एंड दिस न्यू ऑर्डर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज कमिंग ऑल दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस गेम ऑफ राहु एंड वी शुड नॉट टेक अवे द फैक्ट दैट दिस राहु इज विथ जुपिटर राइट नाउ इन भरनी विच हैज ऑल्सो गॉन रेट्रोग्रेड एंड ऑन फोर्थ ऑफ सेप्टेंबर वेन जुपिटर बिकम्स रेट्रोग्रेड इट स्टार्ट्स approaching rahu when jupiter will approach rahu it means that the knowledge is approaching the illusion which can have two meanings number one maybe the knowledge is now getting corrupt or the knowledge is there to destroy the illusion so the astitva of rahu is now under question the existential crisis now comes into picture and with a retrograde saturn from aquarius having the third aspect on this rahu kind of make things difficult for the planet so what will rahu do it is going to utilize the ketu's energy to escape it is going to utilize martian energy so rahu may take a very brute approach see rahu is a shape shifter so it will take the shape of the container and the container here is mars so rahu will take the shape of mars but a very violent mars so you will see that verbal disagreements will increase verbal fights will increase things might go ugly especially for people who have afflicted mars in their birth chart who are aries ascendant moon sign and scorpio ascendant moon sign who have majority of planet in aries zodiac sign or who have rahu in aries what should you do see mars is energy rahu is you can say a medium of communication it's 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 a wavelength and ketu Uh, is more about connecting to the inner world connecting to the divine world imagine like this uh when we buy a laptop or when we buy a processor what do we see we see the clock speed say for example uh there's a 4 gigahertz processor there's a 2.3 gigahertz processor and then we say oh i want to game or i want to edit i want to do something about this processor let me buy a processor that can be overclocked 5 gigahertz what does this mean clocking frequency is a frequency that enables the capacity of the processor imagine it like uh, opening the gate and allowing the resource to work clocking is like the feeding the food to the processor through which the processor will work similarly uh, if this mars uh, is so strong here mars is playing the vital role mars can become the clock speed it's all about energy so you have to regulate your inner and outer energy you will have to regulate your inner and outer self otherwise everything will be fine and one fine day one random event remember rahu will create the most random stupid event in your life which you can't predict which you can't plan and if you're not aware at the very instant at the present if you're not in the present there can be a mistake you may end up fighting you may end up speaking something nonsense you may end up you know just speaking rubbish and you don't know what damage it will create it's very difficult to ascertain now if you ask me to pinpoint one location it is not possible because for every individual rahu will impact aries wherever is your aries you will have to be careful say if your aries in 6 8 or 12th house then you will have to be extra careful because the potential that it can bring there is very high if aries is your ascendant it is on your head so you will have to be careful if you are running a mars mahadasha or rahu mahadasha you will feel the high end results anger frustration uh living on the edge not able to sleep in the night waking up early break of sleep unable to decide what to do are very common themes 
I'm not saying that everybody will feel like this, but to a certain level, you will feel this. Either you will be able to manage and you know continue your life, or you will be affected by it. But somewhere in the background, it's imagine Rahu like a background radiation that is always there. That is always it's like a shadow. If there is light, there will be shadow, and it will always be behind you. You won't be able to see the shadow if you are focusing on the light. So what should you do? This Rahu's energy should be converted into healing process. Clean your house. Detoxify yourself. Do not eat tamasic food like garlic, onion, chilies. Non-veg is goes out of question. Alcohol smoking should be reduced to minimum, or if possible, no, don't do it. If you are sick, chant Hanuman Chalisa. Uh, if you are, you know, scared. Chant Hanuman Chalisa. Few shlokas, like one shloka is Nase Rog Hare Sabapira, Japat Nirantar Hanumat Bira. Continuously chant this by taking the name of God because it gives you that confidence. If you are feeling that there is a paranormal activity or you know, you are getting that sensation or you know, there is a lot of gut feeling, you don't know what it is, good or bad. You, you are sensing some energy, you are unaware, good or bad. Then you should chant this shloka, this doha. Bhut pishach nikat nahi aave, Mahavir jab naam sunave. So constantly take the name of Mahavir, Mahavir Hanuman. It is like more like an affirmation. If you see, Bhut pishach nikat nahi aave, that means Bhut and pishach will not come close to you when you take the name of Mahavir. So it's more like an affirmation. You're telling yourself. This will increase the willpower. Remember, Rahu is the power within. It is not outside. It does not have a physical existence. It's all in your mind. It's all your own creation. Sun and moon are the luminaries. It is your own light, your own Atman. It is the byproduct. Tamas is a byproduct of Sattva. Where there is not, where, wherever there is no Sattva, Tamas will exist. So, you will have to energize your inner self. I am repeating, energize your inner self. This is a vital amount of time where if you can focus on the sadhana, you will go places. Remember, Jupiter is retrograde in Bharani Nakshatra. I've made a video about Jupiter retrograde for all ascendant. You can refer to that. But Jupiter in Bharani is again very tantric, you know, very highly occult. This Rahu in Ashwini is going to be wonderful for two kind of people. One who is a researcher, who is innovator, who wants to do, who wants to open technological startups, who want to do something that is not usual, something that has never been tried before. If you want to take that bold step, when you are confident, when you have that energy and when your horoscope allows, if you take that, Rahu in Ashwini will actually help you take that leap of faith. But Rahu in Ashwini can also make you believe that bad habits are good for you. It is also a thought process, an ideology that can be bad for you, people around you and society. So you will have to be very cautious on what you are believing, why you are believing. So the critical thinking has to be given the higher priority. The other person who will be affected by this is our doctors, healers, medical professional, pharmaceutical industries. What you should do is move towards holistic healing. Pranayam controls Rahu because it's all about Vayu. Cleansing will clean Rahu. Rahu is not your enemy. Rahu is a byproduct of your own thought process. It's, it's a byproduct of your own life, your own life's force and life's energy. So what you should do? Cleanse it. So Nadi Shodhan Pranayam or Anulom Vilom Pranayam, wherever it is possible, do it. Apart from that, uh, because Mars and Rahu are coming together, it's kind of an Angarak energy. So anger management again becomes a theme. If you feel you are getting angry or if you are on the edge and if you are unable to manage it, Talk to a counsellor immediately. Because right now Jupiter retrograde is with Rahu. Jupiter will heal you. Jupiter is trying to catch Rahu. Get a help. You will be able to manage it. And things are that planets are in such a way that Saturn is also catching hold of Rahu. Jupiter is catching. So Rahu is kind of trapped, right? So the Tamsik energy is trapped. All you will have to do is work on these two retrogrades. I will make another separate video on exclusively on the double retrogression of Jupiter and Saturn. Otherwise, this video will be too big. You will have to connect both the videos. But 
just to add a point here that retrograde Saturn's Vakra Drishti, the third aspect falls on this Rahu and both Jupiter, but Jupiter will be kind of okay with this, but Rahu will be decimated, the negative energies. Now, Rahu can revolt, Rahu can give in. You should allow the Rahu to surrender. And when I say Rahu to surrender, I'm not saying the Rahu, the Devata, but the Rahu, which is a part of you, your Tamsik energy. Give up some bad habits. This is the perfect time. Focus on your stomach health. Perfect time. Ideas will come that can change the world. So no idea, however funny it may sound, is non-important. Write it down, note it down. It can change your life. Give value to yourself. Work on your own inner energy, inner core. And focus more on optimistic, so positive words. Do a lot of affirmation like Aham Brahmasmi, So Ham. A lot of people can do this. You know, if, if Om chanting is difficult, you can see the breathing. It's like, it's So Ham. So So Ham is like the natch coming in sync or in rhythm with the biology of the universe. And then automatically Rahu will become okay. Now the lot of question is, is Rahu your enemy? Should, why does Rahu exist? Well, shed is necessary on a hot day when there is scorching sunlight. Don't you find the shade of a tree? Why? Isn't shadow a Rahu? Then why do you take the shelter of the shadow? Both are a part of this cosmos. Both are playing their vital role. Both are necessary. But they are completing each other. They are complementing each other. But you will have to kind of know where to exist, when to exist. Because if you completely start living in shadow, then you will become a shadow kind of person. No sunlight again, bad for health. But if it is like a balance is maintained, that is good for you. There is a reason why Rahu is placed in the Navagraha, right? It's not you or me who decided that Rahu will become a Devata and will be in the Navagraha. There is a reason for that. Now on top of that, Rahu's energy will also affect Ketu, Ketu which is in Libra. Which means... Marriage, equations of marriage will change for a lot of people, especially Rahu affected horoscopes may get a bad marriage impact. So be watchful of that. On top of that, there will be new innovations, new inventions, new discoveries during this time. Uh, you will see things happening in weird ways, especially financially. So keep a track, keep an eye on all the financial developments and think 10 steps ahead and then plan and invest. Now, when Rahu is in Ashwini Nakshatra, uh, you will see that Mars is in Virgo. When Mars is in Virgo, Mars is in the sixth house from Rahu. It's actually going to favor Rahu. So this is a great time to combat enemies. So if you think you are in a, you are down and out, and you 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 know you are surrounded by the enemies, again pray to Bhagwan Hanuman by chanting Hanuman Chalisa, and this will help you disconnect from the negative energy and your enemies will go away and you will be able to win over all the negative forces. So you see this Rahu in Gandanta is actually taking the shape of a very different kind of life, very different kind of world and only if you have that eye to see these changes, you will be able to observe. For a lot of people, it will be just business as usual and that is also perfectly fine. Not everyone is supposed to look in that direction, look at that angle. A lot of people only, you know, it's not wrong to think that what does it matter to me if something happens in the world as long as I am living a good life because I may be in the battle of survival, survival for food, survival for shelter, correct? So in that case, also Rahu will help you to take that leap of faith. A lot of people will come out of poverty during this time. Suddenly there will be a rush and this rush, this adrenaline rush can actually help you to take that jump Maybe you wanted to quit job to follow your passion. You have planned enough. You know it will work, but there is no strength coming from within. Now Rahu will give you that strength. That is why Rahu is important. You want to break barrier, you need Rahu. It's that. Why are you breaking? With what resources are you breaking? What are the limitations you are following? If you don't worry about all those things and if you jump, then it's like a foolish jump. 
But if you have planned, if you know, if you have, if you are selected, if your guru has guided you, you are doing everything right, then Rahu will help you overcome your fears. Because fear cuts fear. You face your fear, you are actually facing your own inner self. And for people who are involved in surgeries, people who are, who are involved in occult practices, people who want to do sadhana or siddhi of a mantra, perfect time for this. Remember that Ashwini is basically the dawn, the pre-dawn time. And waking up in Brahma Muhurta will suddenly improve your gut strength, gut feeling, and it will give you that, that sudden spiritual growth. So people who are seeking spiritual growth or even a layman who wants to change their life, if you don't know anything, maybe you, you can't pronounce the mantra, maybe you, you're watching this video for the first time, you don't know what Rahu is. Let me tell you one thing. Forget everything and do a little bit of experiment, a little experiment. Wake up at 4 a.m. every day for the next three months. See the difference. See the difference by yourself because energies are hovering around. All you have to do is tune into that. But to tune into that, your physical body, like an antenna, should be prepared, should be ready. Should be ready to receive and absorb. If you are sleeping, you won't be able to. So wake up at 4 a.m. if possible. See the difference. And uh, Rahu in Ashwini, uh, especially in the Mars, can uh, can trigger accidents. So if you have that accident yoga in your chart, be watchful. If you are dealing with a person who has an exalt Mars, or if you are dealing with a person who is heavily Mars dominated, try to calm yourself down. Because this can easily convert into a road rage. This can easily convert into a fight, a battle, an ego battle. And unnecessary energy will be wasted because if you allow Rahu to be who truly he is Aries the first Pada Martian energy Rahu would want to you know exercise the maximum after all it's leaving so it will try to exercise its maximum then Rahu can cause more harm than profit because Rahu is the master of Kali Yuga Rahu is transactional, but Rahu will give you. You must give something in return. So if you are asking something during this time, ensure that you are paying off in a certain way by doing some good karma or helping someone. This transaction must be closed. And uh, when Rahu will move in the Revati Nakshatra, I will make special video, another video for that. One video I will make for Rahu transit in Pisces for all ascendants. And then I will make another video exclusively for what will happen when Rahu will enter the fourth pada of Revati Nakshatra in the sign of Pisces. It's a very different thing. You will see the equations related to navies and uh, the geopolitics around the ocean and ocean island nations will change completely. More magic to happen in the future. But in your inner self, the Deva Sur Sangram, the battle between the gods and the evil will increase 10 times. So if you're that's why if you're confused, you may need a little bit of hand holding. And if you don't have anyone to go to, you don't know what to do, you are helpless and you are in depression or in any situation where you can't reach anyone. Start chanting Om Ham Hanumate Nama. Om Ham Hanumate Nama. Om Ham Hanumate Nama and ask Bhagwan Hanuman to become your Guru. See the difference.